Welcome to the show tonight, Expand Music with Noel Webb. I'm Noel Webb. It's uh, Wednesday, August 7th, a beautiful night in uh, in Los Angeles, wherever you are around the world. I know there's a lot of people, but it's 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 been a wonderful couple of three or four weeks here with talking to uh, music supervisors and editors and VPs of music and all all such for uh, who handles syncing uh, for film and uh, and how music and and all other th- aspects of how to make a trailer, particularly, uh, happens in Hollywood. So tonight we we have one of the best guys you're going to be able to talk to. Uh, he's uh, coming on a second, Vaughn Kepler from Paramount, and uh, uh, we're going to we're going to talk about uh, Paramount, which is you know a whole studio, and 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 what happens. Uh, with particular trailers, you send me a couple of trailers to play, and we're going to play those and talk about them specifically. So this is Vaughn Kevler from Paramount Studios. Hello, Vaughn. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Very good. It's late at night, I know, and you're you're still sitting at work. Yes, I'm still at work, working on the next available trailer. <laughs> Everybody in this industry, uh, every I mean, I was interviewing uh, a guy from London last night. He was there at nine thirty at night. At night, his wife called him. That's standard, huh? Well, it's not standard, but you go through your ebb and flow periods where we may have a lot more product out there, and we're always constantly working in advance. So our trailers are coming out six, eight months before a film is released. And so when we get closer to a film release, we're working on the next set of trailers for the next film that might be six months in the in arrears. So sometimes we're here late, sometimes we're not. It, it just depends. Mm-hmm. And you seem to be okay with it. How long have you been at Paramount then? Uh, 2006, I actually started working here in the finance department and then uh, segued over into the music area. I, I basically spent 10 years at Warner Brother Records and came to Paramount in the finance angle and then moved my way into music, and I've enjoyed every day. So I don't yeah, mind no, the ta- extra hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking, Vaughn, to my daughter about to enter college and the the serendipity of how you went to finance this is a good example right there of um, mm-hmm. being involved with a, a wider parameter of industries that you like and here you are slipping into this not slipping i mean you also have to have the the the, uh, the talent and the luck that's what serendipity is and the choices you made to there you are so that's a great the way it happens yeah well everything in in business today evolves around the bottom line even in music the world of music is so vast and so many artists out there all trying to vie for their product and you know, you have to kind of look at the bottom line and say, hey, I love that song, but can I actually afford it? And is, you know, even large corporations that I like Paramount and, you know, any other studio, they have a bottom line they have to respect. And so they want the best piece of music for the best price. And you have to be able to negotiate that level there. So you have to say, okay, I understand I have a bottom line and I can't just be totally creative. I can't just say, oh, I love that music so much. When you can't afford it, you can't afford it. You have to pay for it at the end of the day. So, Well, Vaughn has worked on pretty much every Paramount picture for I don't know how many years. But he's, I mean, the list here is 2007? 2006, just, yeah. 2006, I mean, way the middleman, way back to, of course, Paranormal 2 and 3 recently in Shutter Island. Uh, and uh, currently it's uh, Anchorman and Destination Weddings and Jack S. Reed 2, D and Noah, and some more we'll play in a second. So are you negotiating yourself with the, the – are you doing some clearance stuff there, or what happens with that? Yeah, we actually farm out the music. People will send me submissions, Sony Music, Warner Brothers. They'll send you know any of their latest artists to us, and they'll say, hey, this is a great song. It might work for you. We'll then source that to our creative department who is working in conjunction with filmmakers to promote their vision of the film. And then we will try to see if that music fits in with the flow of our actual creative design for our marketing campaign. So if we and I will produce those things for them and give them the you know songs and say, this might work for Jackass or this song actually might work for, you know, um, Anchorman. And then we just recently have in our Anchorman spot, we have Don't Stop Believing, which was just such the epitome song for that genre of film. Here you're looking at, you know, Anchorman 1, and then we've moved into Anchorman 2, and we just kind of carried that theme throughout. So it worked out really well for us. And 
we then go to the licensors and negotiate the rights. And we have, of course, standard rights that we get for, you know, all trailer rights, excluding, you know, we go out for all media. Later on in the campaign, do you know, to cost restrictions, may we, we'll need to scale those rights back to something more along the lines of an all media quote without theatrical because we've moved out of the actual, like, theatrical in theater trailer window and now we're moving into our tv campaign and we want to tie all of this together so it's kind of fun to negotiate those those prices with people and deal with which licensors have sub publishers which have sub sub publishers and it's kind of a, an interesting uh area well the the specifics of a contract has changed so dramatically it used to be all everything here you go but now there the money is so intense correct me if i'm wrong Vaughn, that you can as you just said you know there's just just television if you want to go that way or just theatrical and group together in a column of how much money you're going to spend for whatever and i guess that's the way the negotiations work today is that the way you're talking about right yes actually it is you will we'll go to them and you know most most uh, master owners or the publishers will come back and, you know, depending on if it's MFN, on MFN, we try to get everything MFN because we like to be fair across the board to everyone. And yeah, we'll go to them yeah. and say, this is, you know, they'll ask us, well, how much do you have? And we'll, and, I, and that's my job to then turn around and say, well, how much do you want? Because our you know, that's funny. Is, that's funny because, you know, as a publisher, <laughs> that's generally how I approach it. What have you got, Vaughn? Exactly. You know, and, and, yeah, what do you, you got? Know, what do you got? That's the way it is. There it is. So, uh, what's a <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Thing? And everybody wants a slightly bigger piece of the pie, and I get that. But we have a very, you know, in business today, is an economy being the way it is. Even film companies are feeling that pinch. You know, they're they're scaling back on their budgets and saying, you know, not as much for for that. I mean, there are some songs that we would just would love to have, but you know, you love the Rolling Stones, but you know, you go to their publisher Abco, and it's. Sometimes they're just like, we're the Rolling Stones. And you're like, well, yes, but we want your music, but I don't, I can't afford a million dollar song. So you try to yeah, negotiate that, with them as best you can. So I've always quoted that to be the big boy price. Uh, cause, uh, so, so for artists who aren't famous, uh, you're still considering them, those songs. Oh, and we use it quite often. Of it. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We actually are, are looking at uh, some current artists that are really undiscovered or just being released into the, the genre of their music scheme. And for me, it's just amazing because I love to hear the new things that come up. They come up with the new ideas, and, and mm -hmm. we present that to the creative department. And they go, they'll go, oh, my God, that's fantastic. That'll work so perfectly here. And then we go back and we negotiate it with them. And, and they're more reasonable. They tend to be more reasonable. Established artists, of course, you know, garner a much higher rate and even in publishing. So for us, it's trying to find that fantastic new song that – will fit within our budget or using a pre-established work and still fit within our budget. So at the end of the law, end of the day, everything is about a budget today. So, Yeah. Well, you know, there, as well as there's musicians listening, composers and, and other people in the industry listening, but for those musicians who are listening, what is so enlightening to hear from you particularly uh, is that uh, uh, to know that guys, you're listening to him and knowing that, the, they're sitting down and really trying to put an art product together visually with being inspired by some music. So when you present music to, to Vaughn, I'm going to speak for you if I may, they're, they're considering the, the art object here, uh, uh, the music and the emotionality of it and the lyrics, of course, and all that. So it's not just like, well, let's just go get this guy here or whatever. This, this, is, this is art product he's putting together, syncing. Well, yes, we're trying to invoke an emotional response from a viewer to say, I tie to that music. Oh, I remember when I was a child and I heard that song. Or, you know, even someone younger, we're using more hip hop than we've ever done before. And oh. we're looking into, yes, we're, we're, we're moving into just recently in our Wolf of Wall Street, which is a product I sent to you earlier, is it's a, it was unreleased Kanye West track that he performed on SNL right before the album dropped. We went after the song and said we would love that song for this, this feature, for this trailer. It would work fantastically for us. And it did. The music synced with that image just worked so phenomenally well. It just, it, it, when we heard it, it was like, wow, that's the one. <laughs> So we try yeah. to fit that. We try to get an emotional response from a viewer in a theater, and we want to, you know, make it important to them, you know, so that when they sit there and they see the film, they're like, I love the music in here. Just like, you know, not even from our studio, but Gatsby, the, the film Gatsby, The Great Gatsby. The music that they invoke in that film, I, I, had to, I literally ran out and bought the CD off iTunes, like, like that day. 
Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it was just Mm -hmm. so perfect for that film. So it's trying to mirror an artist, um, you know, produce, you know, anyone, the composers, the publishers, the artists, the actual song, trying to find that perfect niche within our film. And that's always a balancing act. And our creative does a fantastic job. you, You don't know how inspiring it is to hear the focus that you have uh, on wanting to get what's right for a film. So what was then uh, one of the first or first couple of a trailer uh, sound, a trailer trailers that flipped you out? Do you remember it's way back there with um, uh, Last of the Mohegans or some people say Carmina Burano, or Fortuna or The Matrix Revolution or do you remember the first couple that flipped you out? The the first one, I think, that I really sat up, and I have to say, and you just said it, was The Matrix. The soundtrack for that was just inspiring. And hearing it played to those images that you're watching, it just invoked this, oh, my God, I want to be there kind of feeling for you. And then there have been so many trailers that I have worked on since I've been at Paramount. And, and it's just... You can't you you like them all because they all have their own different style and their own different a different creative may have had a different vision and we have we have a very fantastic creative department here and each one that you saw was just like oh my god I love that one and then you saw another one you were like oh I love that even more mm-hmm. you know you just you can't really just sit down and say that one's the one that stands out for me but in my mm-hmm. in for me actually it was on GI Joe because the phenomenal Jack White had Seven Army Nation and Glitch Mob had made a remix of it and to me that song was just amazing and although we love the original the remix and he was so gracious about letting us use it because as you know Jack White's not really a fan of unauthorized remixes so they he was approached and he was like well I'm not sure but he was so gracious about it and so fantastic and we are so grateful because it works so well in the G.I. Joe trailer but when you heard, when people heard it, I was literally getting phone calls from other employees within Paramount going, hey, where can I get that? Where can I get that song? And that's oh, what we're looking nice, for. When, nice. we, when we put it in there, it's like, well, is it going to make that person want to go buy it? Which is, is just a leap-off point for me because I worked at Warner Brothers for so many years that you try to find new avenues of revenue for an artist. And that's the perfect avenue. Our film, married to their music, promoting that song and then somebody runs out and buys it and that's what you want so. well of course you know you're now talking about the, the 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 win-win situation that happens so much mm-hmm. in hollywood all the time now we're all waking up to it um and uh the it, now you're telling me of course that sometimes the artist is involved rather than just the publisher uh, if it's a personal yeah. thing it's very personal jack i know it is uh you know you're talking to him so you know that's a different mm-hmm. thing that's kind of neat you know Yes, no, it's fantastic. And we do a lot of work for hires. For Paramount, we do quite a few. We like, we may like a song, but it just doesn't quite fit for what we need. So recently we did, even in uh, the Star Trek trailer, we used a video game, uh, Gears of War. They had a track for their Gears of War video. And we had a gentleman by the name of Alex Levy who went and worked on it for us to fit it to the trailer because the sound effect from their video game just was fantastic in the piece. Uh, you know, I'm hearing a lot of rises, you know, yeah. I guess we were, yeah, okay, so good, you're right. So rises of, of orchestras, rises of sound effects, and, and I'm hearing also a lot more elements as opposed to harmonic uh, uh, sounds uh, uh, in in lots of trailers, and I think that's happening a little bit more. You know, the elements and the uh, sound effects. Yeah, I think that most people. I think that in the creative division, in the world of creative, they want to get people on the edge of their seat. And I believe the rises force a person to kind of like go at the screen, like, oh my god, I want to see this. Oh my god, I want to see this. So mm-hmm. that actually worked in our favor. And the funny part is about this entire trailer. We didn't really use any major label music. It was mostly sound design and some score from other films. Yeah, it's, it's, that's what you can hear. So, you know, that's, that's a whole different kind of a design. You know, I, I got to tell you, uh, as I've, I've come to lots of music supervisors' offices, and when I came to your office, you were just so relaxed. I think we actually had a – last time I was there, a little problem with a drive or something. And it's, it's, yeah. it's just an even keel – yeah, right, remember. Even keel office and, and people are surrounding you. And I don't know if you've been, been able to, to visit other 
uh, studios or music supervisors, but they're pretty hectic, Yvonne, and, and you got a, yeah. you got a nice cool place, and you're you're cool there, so it's very nice to, to talk to you and know you. So oh, yeah, great. thank you. Yeah. I, I enjoy what I do. I've, I've loved what I've done for the last few years, and and it, it was funny. We were just having that discussion the other day, and somebody said, how do you keep it all straight? You're working on nine, ten trailers right now? I said, yes, and they were like, wow, <laughs> and I'm trying to you know, get the prices that we needed for and find source music for creative and then get that so the filmmakers are happy. And we do. We center around all of it. It all comes back to me. And then when there's a problem, they come running in going, oh, my God, what do we do? It's like, okay, calm down. It's all right. We'll fix it. <laughs> yeah, you my really boss likes to round, refer to me as the fixer. Most of the other music supervisors, Vaughn, they don't really deal with uh, the clearances even approaching that or money. Um, they're really doing their thing, and and you you you've got so much more you're doing there, so it's very commendable, man. No, thank you, thank you. I really enjoy it a lot. I look forward to it, I, and I love the creative. I, th- I think it's fun when you work in a creative environment. When I myself am not truly a creative person, I like to be the backbone to the situation. Uh, let me fix it. Let me let me do this for you, and let me find that one thing that works for you, so you can go out there and make the most amazing trailer you've ever seen. So that works man, in that, my world. That is the vibe I got that I was just talking about. You just described it when I walked into your office. So. So yeah. if you're searching at all, do you, uh, you're 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 calling friends and uh, who have stuff and listening. So do you do you search at all? Are you willing to go to the internet to to listen to stuff at all and source audio? I do. Right? I, I I do. I spend a lot. We just recently were introduced to this new company called Source Audio, where they source a lot of um, sound design and from most of the library houses in one localized place. And the fantastic thing about that program we found was. You could pull a segment of a song. You can upload a song into their program. You can pull the segment that you want, and it'll search across all the databases that they have from all the different vendors and find you music that fits that genre, mm-hmm. it's which cool. I thought was just I'm fantastic. Up. So we're actually in the middle of uh, – my boss is currently driving that program right now where she's – you know we're setting it up, and we have like a sandbox now. We can go play in it and just try to – figure out if it works for us and it's it's there once she's motivating all of the people within the company to kind of look at it and say this is really something we need to set up and look at specifically being in a creative environment because we have so many different areas it's not just the trailer we have interactive digital partnership you know so there's so many aspects of theatrical marketing that that most music supervisors, I think, kind of get lost in because they focus on that one piece and they say, oh, I'm just here to make the trailer. I'm here to make that TV spot. I'm here to make the radio spot. The problem is all of these other areas are interested in music as well because, as we all know, music motivates everyone. It touches everyone at some point. Yeah, and I'm glad you're talking about technology. I mean, I don't want to source audio. We're in source audio also, and one of the things you can do up there is to actually play a piece of music, and it will match it. So I know you know yeah. how cool that is. Uh, but I'm, I want technology to keep up with Von Kebler, with Noel Webb, and all this stuff, and I'll be pissed off if they don't. So, you know, keep yeah. it going. Uh, you know, yeah, that would be I nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, they sort of are, Von. They're, they're keeping up with us. You know, I think I like listening to it maybe more than the combo of the visual. And the, I don't know. I love that. Listen to this stuff. That one like, had a little yeah. more of the melodic tones to it, but then it had the swells and rises to kind of get you amped up and, and to be excited about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, a, it's, you know, they're wonderful jobs, Vaughn. You know that. And I want to play mm-hmm. G.I. Joe in a second, which Vaughn is very proud of and he should be. But before I do, I wanted to just ask you, what is it like who, uh, for working with directors or producers to come in to sit with you? Um, actually, on that part, I do, I do less of that than more with the creative. Our creative department deals start primarily with the directors and the producers and the filmmakers on a whole. I like to stay in the back personally, and I think that's what makes my job so exciting is that I take the vision that's from them, and it's then relayed to me through a creative, and we kind of go from that way. It, it just makes it more convenient in the end of the day, so we're not jumbling up everybody's desires and wants. And I am tend to be more black and white when they come to me and they say, well, we really want to do this. And I'm like, you really have to look at the cost of what you're going to do. We can do this and you, you can go back to them and they'll, they might love it. And they do ultimately at the end of the day when they realize that, you know, they're seeing their vision come to life, but with a little bit of a tweak in the music section, then they may think, oh, I just love that. Let's play with that. And then they go, no, that's not really going to work for this trailer. So then they come and we sit down and we talk about it. And it's just so that part I enjoy a lot. But I really, on the average, don't deal with directors and producers directly. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, this is yeah. Expand Music with Noel Webb. Next week, if I may, just for a second, Vaughn, is mm-hmm. I'm interviewing Alexi Robbins, who invented the application Timbre, which shows you and tells you where our musicians are playing all over the city and right down on the street near you, which is going to be a great program. As I said, these tech people, Vaughn, are keeping up with us, so that's who I'm interviewing yeah. next Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Oh, man. Vaughn, thank you for bringing this to us, these, these four trailers. It's very nice of you to talk to us and give us all this information. Very nice. No problem. Thank so, you. No, I, was, I had a great so, time. Good. Well, it's Vaughn Kevler from Paramount, and I'll, I hope to see you later. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Vaughn. Thanks. Goodbye. going to be made so we listen we watch the news the tunes the gaga the report the seaport the speech song clothes she wears what clues can we shuffle through to keep from drowning too much man Nothing's going to be new to you, but soon from behind on the latest lawsuit to cover all bases. Because the New York Yankees make me, sank me. Coldplay tells me what to do. I'm thinking for yourself. But if they don't, they won't, they don't, they won't, they can't. You can't see where you're standing in the crowd, but you really can't see where you're walking in the world, baby. Walk, man, walk. See where you run by yourself, yourself. Walk, man, walk, and see where you run by yourself, yourself. <laughs> 